Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to be on the Tonight Show. This is the Four Nights We Just Bought Podcast. Yeah. And faithful, stand up, baby. Faithful, faithful, what up? Uh, it's your boy BMH doing a solo show tonight, but we do have a special guest, so make sure you stay tuned for that. This is the 49365 Tonight Show on Frontline Sport Media. Shout out to Croc, shout out to everybody involved in the whole team. Um, we got a lot of big things planned, and you know, we wanted to keep it consistent, we wanted to keep the show going. JB unfortunately couldn't make it out tonight, he had some uh, you know, scheduling you know, issues. And so that's the reason why I came on a little bit late, but it is the Tonight Show, man. So we're going to get to it. And, you know, I feel like a lot of the faithful as a whole, we're just on a good vibe right now. So y'all could tap in with me. Let me know how you're feeling right now in the comment section. Send an emoji out. Send some emojis with what the vibe, what the mood is for right now. I always like to start off that way. Shout out to Croc. He does that too on the morning shows. But this this episode is a little bit special, man, because... um. I, I went on solo a little bit uh, on one of our, I think it was after the Titans game when I went on and JB had to uh, sign out a little bit early, but you know, it's just a different vibe when you up here by yourself. But at the end of the day, I'm not by myself because I'm with the faithful. Um, I'm going to let a few more people tap in, come into the, to the uh, live session right now before we kind of get things started. Um, you know, it's funny because I know when me and JB, we never talked about the, that Spider-Man movie that just came out. And for those of y'all who don't know me a little bit more about myself, I'm a huge, you know, superhero. I watch all the Marvel movies, all the DC movies. I watch all that type of stuff, you know, and going to the theater for that Spider-Man movie. I ain't going to give no spoilers, but it was a great time. It was a it was a wonderful experience. And I was just thinking back because this is the last game of the season. And I was thinking back to, you know, like all the times involved with sports in my life, it just always felt like towards the end of the season, going into that playoff push, we would always watch some movie. You know, we would always watch something to get you in that mood of like us against the world. You know, um, you know, we got to just take on everybody. Just just a dope classic, whether it's a sports movie, a superhero movie, something like a, a war movie, just any sort of epic story where against all odds you have to come together show leadership persevere whatever the case is all those traits right and so um i was just thinking about that and thinking about spider-man um you know that spider-man movie because we never fully talked about it but if you haven't seen it make sure you see it that's all i'm gonna say it was a, it was a great movie uh fun time at the theater although i will have to say that i think that a spider-verse movie with miles morales was a uh, probably my favorite spider-man movie i will say that the the graphics and everything in that movie were just next level but let's get to this niner talk man um we have a special guest like i said for today um as jb cannot be on with us but a very special guest i'm excited to get to that in a little bit um really just gonna vibe out with y'all so you know like i said let me know how you feeling in that comment section you know what i'm talking about let me know how you feeling for this game um but in terms of my opening statement before we get to the rest of the show the special guests just going through twitter seeing checking the post with the faithful i wanted to give my opening statement on how i was feeling this morning and how i was feeling throughout the day as i was thinking about this uh you know last game of the regular season that's coming up on sunday in la which i will be there for that game and i titled this show is it time for 49ers fans it's time for the faithful to sober up a little bit because i'm feeling so much momentum i'm feeling so many good vibes you know that we were we were in a good place before the tennessee game right the tennessee game kind of killed our momentum it kind of killed the energy you know we were we were vibing um you know people were always polarized by jimmy g but for the most part when you looked at what he had did you know to close out the Bengals game when you looked at what he get, did in the previous few games taking out that seattle seahawks game we were in good spirits we had a good vibe good, good momentum going into close out this season in this last stretch but then this whole injury situation this whole you know is trey lance gonna play is he not is jimmy g gonna be healthy is he not and that's still gonna be the case a little bit for this week right but the difference is this previous game against the texans you know it just kind of put us to ease a little bit because although the first half was a little shaky although you know the game the Texans aren't that formidable of opponent, but they still did beat the Chargers the week previous. They still have, you know, um, uh, close to the top of the league in terms of 
um, interceptions and, and uh, pass defense. So they're still, you know, they're an NFL team. They got NFL guys on one, two year contracts, et cetera. Guys are playing for their job. So anything can happen. And we've already put out some stinkers against the Seahawks, against the Cardinals with Colt McCoy. We, we've seen that the Colts. We've had bad games. So, you know, you got to appreciate everything. So they can't take anybody for granted. Right. But at, in that second half, Trey Lance, it wasn't like he just, you know, had some dinks and dunks and, you know, got things going and the run game was going crazy. No, he had to make some plays and he made some plays. You know, Shanahan was able to open up, open it up. And maybe it was less of Shanahan being, you know, making a conservative effort to open it up and maybe more of Shanahan just calling some of the similar plays that he usually does. And Trey Lance being able to actually get the ball deep, you know, we actually make some of these hits down the field that we hadn't seen uh, from Jimmy G as much. And the stats back that up, you know, it was the the average depth of target was, you know, if you're if you're taking under account. Uh, Jimmy G's tenure with the 49ers, it would be his second average depth of target to the first year where he came here against the Texans, uh, ironically enough, um, in 2017. So Trey was getting the ball downfield. You know, that's just that's just the facts. And the energy, you know, you just, you just think of the big plays. You know, I'm going to go show a few clips later, but, you know, I know all 49ers fans there's plenty of fans out there that's you know lakers fans all different types of teams from all different places around the country i'm a i'm a warriors fan and you know one thing i can't say is that when steph curry's in that arena when there's nothing like and i don't care if you're a fan of a different team etc if, if there's nothing like when steph is shooting a three previously at oracle arena now in san francisco at the chase center but previously at oracle arena in oakland there's nothing like that in the NBA when just he's open and you know, the ball's going up and like the energy of the crowd, you just feel it. And, you know, it was interesting seeing some of the clips of that Trey Lance throw to Devo because you felt like before he even threw the ball, the fans knew <laughs> they knew it was coming. They knew it was up and the energy just kind of got there, you know, and it was just a dope, dope thing to experience. So, I guess like from that game, maybe I don't want to speak for all the faithful, but I'm getting the sense from going through Twitter and the posts before the game. There was some like, you know, if Trey Lance doesn't play well, people are going to get at him and it's going to, you know, all the Jimmy fans are going to come for his neck and yada, yada, yada. Well, he had a solid game. He came through victorious. He had some adversity in the beginning, but he was able to bounce back. And, you know, it's good vibes. But it was the Houston Texans. It was the Houston Texans. And, you know, I, I for one. I definitely thought, even despite the Tennessee game, I definitely thought, you know, when you look at the tiebreakers and all that, I'm like, oh, well, we beat the Eagles. We beat the Vikings. Like, you know, it would be great to finish off the season and close it out, win all these games. But it's pretty, you know, it's a high chance that we're going to make the playoffs. You look at all those different, you know, analytics and the stats things, and it's like, oh, you have a 60% chance, 70% chance, oh, 50% chance, 85% chance. I think the last time I checked, it was like, you know, over 80 percent, Um, you know, maybe coming into the Titans game. I'm not sure, but I just always felt comfortable. You know, I just felt we're going to make the playoffs, man. Come on. We the good guys. We're going to make this happen. This is this is I don't know. It's, I don't know what we're going to do in the playoffs. I don't have high expectations. I don't just think we're, you know, just Super Bowl bound. But once you get into that dance, anything could happen. And you saw you started to see from some of these analysts, uh, some of these analysis uh, from, you know, the the major the major media guys. Um, a lot of people were saying, you know, we were that dark horse team, like teams didn't want to play us in the playoffs. We were that team. Right. And we were just kind of feeling ourselves. And I guess to to wrap up my opening statement, I think it might be time to sober up a little bit <laughs> um, for the faithful, because. If Trey Lance is playing in this final game of the season against the Rams in L.A., a glorified home game, it is going to be a challenge. It's not the Houston Texans, you know, and, and the Rams, they have something to play for. They want a home playoff game, period. The, the Super Bowl is in L.A. They want to, you know, keep the vibes going, start off the first round in L.A. Like, that's what they want to do. They still got a shot. And, and they're going to they're going to play all their players. They're going to try to win this game. And when you really think about it, you know, Jimmy G, I think his best game this season was against the Rams. I don't know what y'all think, but I think his best game this season was against the Rams. And I was thinking about it today. And partially some of that reason might be because 
what do they always say about Jimmy G? He has a quick release. That's probably his most redeeming quality. That's his best quality. The first thing you think of when you think of Jimmy G in terms of throwing the football and not, you know, his looks is him throwing the ball fast, getting it out quick. And when you look at a team like the Rams and the pressure that they're able to get with some of those guys that they have on the D-line, mainly, mainly Aaron Donald, now when you add in a uh, Hall of Famer, Von Miller, um, and it finally seems like he's getting his mojo going. He got a sack last week, a big one. Um, OBJ made a play, all those sort of things. But on the defensive side, you think of the pressure that they can bring, the ability for Jalen Ramsey to lock one side of the field down, uh, pitch a wide receiver on the island. And you, when you just think about just that fast, that pressure that they could bring, it's like, is Trey Lance going to be able to get the ball out quick? And if he's not, is he going to be able to make that first or second guy miss and make a play down the field? You know, like those are things that it seems like Shanahan always has a strategy in terms of this ball needs to go here, needs to go there, needs to go there. We look at him like this evil genius, this, this guy who's playing video games with real people on Sundays, right? And it seems like he gets upset when the play doesn't go exactly where he wants it to go, when it's supposed to go there, all those sort of things, right? So although Trey can make some plays, and we saw that against the Texans, we saw some, you know, avoiding of pressure, avoiding of some sacks. And even if it's like a two-yard uh, gain or if it's a three-yard run, it's still a positive play that that's not a sack. That's a good thing. But at the same time, it's also a dangerous thing because are you going to be able to do that when it's a team that has a more formidable defense? when you're going against Aaron Donald, when you're going against Hall of Famers, right? We just don't know. And this is Trey's preseason. This is his glorified preseason. I know the stakes are high. It couldn't be higher. It's a playoffs right now. But given, given context for where Trey's at and being fair to him, this is just his third start if he's going to, in fact, play on Sunday. So it's tough. And I want us to win. I'm going to be at the game. I'm going to be juice. I just – the point I wanted to say to wrap up my opening statement – is it may be time for us to sober up a little bit and just realize, okay, just realize that this might be the last week of the season that we're talking about our upcoming game. There's a real chance that this is it. I know we feel like we own the Rams and all that. And you know what? I'm sure that's going to make it even harder to beat them because I know they're motivated. I know Sean McVay is tired of being little brother. You got to you got to figure he's upset with that, man. He's not happy with that. And um, yeah, it's just it's a, it's a tough matchup for us in this scenario. But I'm confident we'll get it done. I'm confident we'll make it happen. I'm excited. I'm, I'm more of the optimistic uh, glass half full guy. That's me. JB is usually more on the pessimistic side, but maybe because he's not here tonight, I'm a I'm a you know, take that uh, pessimistic wheel and, and, and go down that road a little bit. But I just wanted to throw that out there. That's my opening statement. Um, I definitely want to tap in with y'all in the comment section. You know, it kind of reminds me of like, you know, when you're in college, right? Uh, for those of y'all who went to college and your senior season, your senior year, I should say. Um, I was one of those guys who was blessed to have a, you know, I interned with uh, Ernst & Young and was able to get a job directly out of, uh, you know, that internship program. So coming into my senior year, I knew that I had a job. There's nothing for me. I mean, I had to keep my grades up. I, you know, I couldn't just get F's and D's and stuff like that. But like for the most part, I already had everything locked up. I knew what I was, I knew what I, I knew where I was going after my senior year. So there wasn't that stress and that anxiety of what am I going to do next? Um, and so I just had that ability, I feel like, that maybe some of my other classmates didn't have to take a step back and be like, man, I'm going to appreciate this. I'm going to appreciate this moment. I'm going to appreciate this year. Like, I'm going to take everything in, you know, going to the library, going to the cafeteria, just all the little things, being in this environment where there's all these young people around you, where after you graduate, you're never going to be in a situation like that, where everywhere you go is like people of the same sort of um, demographic, the same sort of, um, you know, in the same sort of field and looking to do the same sort of things. You're never going to be in a situation like that again in life, you know, so I was able to appreciate those things. That's the vibe I'm getting now in this week. Like, I just want to appreciate the season, the ups and downs, the roller coaster that it's been like, this could be it. I don't think it will be. I'm confident. I'm faithful all the way. But I just want to like <laughs> sober y'all up a little bit, man. Speaking of sobering up, I'm drinking on some sparkling water, which y'all drinking on, man. It's some Pellegrino. I'm very much of a snob when it comes to the sparkling water. It's got to be Pellegrino. I don't rock with the uh, what's it called? Perrier. I don't, I don't rock with that. I, don't, I just call me a snob. I just 
it just tastes different. Uh, something about it, it just tastes different. But we sipping on that good stuff tonight. What are y'all sipping on? How y'all vibing, man? This is the Tonight Show. JB can't be here, but I do have a special guest that I'm gonna get on right now. <laughs> My boy All Day. Let's let's tap things in real one time, one time. All days in the building. What, what up, do? family? What it How do, you? dog? What it do? Everything you said, I, I love. You always been that way since day one. You've been that 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 good ear to hear. But the stuff you said about the five in a row, that's, every, that's, that's what I've been feeling. That's why I'm, I've am i been sick. Like I've been sick because, like you said, the 80% after the Bengals game, or after the Vikings game, it looked like, well, even four nights could lose. We had, at one point, we, was, we could lose a game and wouldn't lose a spot. Like, it was beautiful. And now I was stumped. I was dumped, B. I was stumped, B. And NFL don't usually stump me when it comes to rules. And I know yeah. the NFL like back of my hand. Right. But when Philly clinched before us with the same record, I was like, I thought NBC made a uh, made a, a bad quote. I'm watching the game and I saw they said Philly clinches with the Packers win. I said, it got to be some kind of mistake. It, it can't be true because we beat Philly. And as of now, we're the sixth seed over Philly. So I'm like, then I started looking at, I said, okay, it's, it's the Saints. But I said, well, it still don't make sense though because we beat Philly and Philly beat the Saints. So it would seem like the Saints would be the team left out in the cold, not us. I know we didn't play the Saints. I know the round robin technically isn't true. But I look at 1-0 49ers, 1-1 Eagles, 0-1 Saints. To make me, it make sense. Breaker. Make it make sense, man. That's make the tiebreaker. So like, I know, you know, I saw some, you know, I'm sure Saints fans like, nah, just win. Y'all control your own destiny. Of course, I, I love that we control our own destiny. However, I'm not going to feel comfortable if we're all nine and eight and we're the team left out to dry. Like we, like it would have been at 10 and seven. Like we could have went 10 and seven, B. Think about that. And, and when you think about it, you know, a big, it's not to make excuses or anything, but look at the divisions, you know, like we're in the NFC West. Two teams you know? been clinched. Like we're in the NFC West. I mean, it's like it just doesn't seem fair, you know. But I guess it's because of, I guess it's because I don't, I don't understand. Because to your point, I don't understand why Philly could just clinch them. Because like, I, I was thinking it was regarding like you know a scenario in which there's like four a four way tie, you know, or something mm -hmm. like that. I get it. You can you can involve other things. It's not right. just head to head because you know you, this team and that team. Like mm -hmm. I get it. You're going to NFC record, all those sort of things, but. It seems to be I, – I just don't know how the system works. I'm not even going to try. Win and get in, all right? Win and get in. We can even lose and get in, but win and get in and be Falcons fans. That's 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 the simple rules for the week, man. But it, I, I'm with you on that. Like, I just – it's just like and, – and that's a part of the reason that I was so – just sobered up, I feel like. All right, that's the best way I could explain it. It's not like I'm negative or like I don't I, – yeah. I'm still confident that – We'll be able to win. I'm juiced. I'm excited. I'm going to the game. Like I'm gonna, right, I'm, gonna have, right. I'm gonna have a great time. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy myself for sure. But I'm just saying, I just want to like look at the season right now and start getting my mind right. Like this this could be it. This could be yeah. the last Tuesday night that we're talking about. Oh, what who we're playing next week? The matchups. All, this could be the last time this season that we do that on on the 75th anniversary. This this big season. The season that we uh, traded up for Trey Lance. The season that we kept Jimmy Garoppolo, the season that we, you know, had a I don't know how many games losing streak where we thought it was all going down to hell, where people were saying fire Shanahan, the season where we bounced back, and you know, it's just been a roller coaster season, and I'm just reflecting on everything now and getting myself ready for any scenario that plays out because nothing is I just feel like overall on Twitter and checking the posts of some of the fans from spaces and stuff, we have an arrogant vibe right now. I think we have an arrogant vibe right now. <laughs> And I'm confident, but like, let's not be arrogant. Let's not be. Oh, we own the Rams. This is no. no. Don't <laughs> don't think that you we've know? never played the Rams when they have this much to win. Like we're we're more desperate, no doubt. We're more desperate, but they have. Think about it. I mean, you could they could they could lose to Philly or easily. We I mean they could, but in their eyes, they get two home playoff games by beating us. Obviously, the NFC West, but they get two two home playoff games. They get Philly, you know, assuming you know whatever. Mm -hmm. Even if they say they say the Saints lose mm -hmm. and Philly lose and we lose, okay, so we're in at six, Philly at seven. So they get Philadelphia, 
and then they get, you know, who the Cowboys, the Bucks, you know, depending on who of the seed is, go to Green Bay. So that's Green Bay. I mean, the Rams have a lot to play for. And yeah. they sick of saying that we own them. Yeah, exactly. So, Sean McVay. Like, I, I almost wish we hadn't beat them five times in a row because, I mean, it's hard to beat a team back to back, let alone six times in a row. So it's just, it's like the cliche saying, man, all good things come to the end. And I'm not saying it's going to happen, but those are the things I've been in my head. The missed mm-hmm. opportunities. I'm like, why do, why the hell could we not have beaten Seattle once? <laughs> why could we not have beaten them once? The, the Cardinals. And, the Cardinals yeah, and Colt McCoy. Four, four games. You win the, one of those four games. It's the Seahawks, the Cardinals game with Colt McCoy. And he, I mean, the Cardinals, the other one was close, but I'm not, you know, expecting to win that. But the Cardinals game with Colt McCoy and the Colts game. Yeah. You can put in the Titans game. Like, yeah. like put in the Titans game. That's those yeah, are five half, games. Man. Yeah. It's just those are five games. We just needed one of them. But, on the, but then on the flip side too, like we could have easily lost that Bengals game, you know, with the with yeah. the interception that could have been. So you can always play that game because you can go the other way and say, you know, we probably could have lost this game that we ended up winning the Philly game. Really? You know, it was, it, you know, so I don't know. It's tough, but but um, let's get to some of these comments, man. Uh, hey, Brad, Brad Brown. <laughs> I, hey, I promise. I, Real quick, actually, before we even get to the comments, man, I see you got the Frontline Sports Media hat on. Oh, yeah, man. You know, you know, I had to. you know what yep. I'm saying? I'm definitely going to tap in with uh, Croc. I want to see if we can do some uh, photo shoots for some of this gear to make sure yeah, that people got it. On. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Line. Repping. And um, for the people that don't know, um, I hit up, I text all day, like, you know, five minutes before I went on, like, you hey, JB couldn't make it. Look, and, and B, like, you see, I didn't, I didn't know to put my Twitter handle. I'm, I'm new to this. I just put all day. I didn't even know. To let them know. Let them know what the Twitter is, man. All day ten. Is it all day? Just like my name. All day ten. At all day ten. One zero. So all day. I just want to let y'all know, like, um, you know, all day. Let's see. So we were in. I don't even remember what it was called, man. What was that app that Spotify uh, bought that took us? Uh, Forty nine or Sunday or nah the the uh, the app the locker room locker room. Oh yeah yeah locker room locker, locker room, room. Yeah. Locker, green room now. yeah yeah Lock, yeah green room something like that. So yeah locker room like so first it started off with Clubhouse. I was on Clubhouse tough, but that was more so for like you know NFT stuff, business mm. stuff, uh, filmmaking. So I was I was on you know Clubhouse for all different types of groups and stuff. But it was dope to me like an app where you can just. It was way more intimate. You could talk to people, you know, see how they're get advice. Be it was like a networking app. You can kind of tap yeah. in with people and meet different people that you otherwise wouldn't have met if you weren't in these groups and talking about your experiences and things like that. Then locker room comes out, which is basically like a clubhouse that was specifically for sports. And I was rocking with it. Like yeah. it really, it really, you know, I'll say therapeutic. It was therapeutic for me to really get through the whole draft season because it was just so right. much going on. Like this whole offseason, it was one of the craziest off seasons not just for the 49ers, but in the NFL, because this was like this quarterback class. We were talking about Zach Wilson. Oh, who do you, who's the guy? Justin Fields. Man, I mean, the Justin Fields. Fields conversations versus Trey. I mean, it was such a polarizing and exciting and, you know, just the, the topics, the content was there this off season. Right. So, you know, I'm in the locker room uh, spaces all the time and, you know, all days, always in the 49ers groups. I'm always in the 49ers group. And it was also Niner Nate. Now I definitely was tapping in with Niner Nate. Yep. So shout out to him. And it's like Niner Nate and in all day, those are like my my homies from locker room. You yeah, know what I'm talking absolutely. about? Like those are my, you know what I'm saying? So absolutely, we haven't even met in person, but I definitely know eventually we're gonna tap in, go to one of these games. I know we were trying to. Uh, did you end up going to the Chicago game? I right. ended up hurting my back. I oh, ended up having man. back surgery, but yeah, my homeboy still went because okay. everything was everything was paid for. Yeah, and the 24th, the week before actually. So I I thought maybe it'd be like a couple of days, and no, my back was all yeah. sciatica. Oh, yeah. damn, Alexa. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't even go either. Yeah, I didn't yeah. go either. Well, you know, that would have been a great game because, you know, we were whole Justin Fields, you know, Trey yeah. Lance. So it would have been a great game to go, but Trey Lance didn't even play. So, you know, that's the You're right. Yeah, it took all. It would, yeah, it took all. I, would, I would love to see us play them in the playoffs sometime soon. We definitely got to, you know, figure it oh, out absolutely. and go to, go to a road game. But, but yeah, we tapped in. And, um, again, I just appreciate you coming on such late notice. I appreciate you um, hitting me up, man. I, I saw it, and I'm like, man, hey, I had to. Yeah, I man, a real man. one right here. It. Make sure y'all follow him for sure. And make sure y'all follow us at 49X365, man. Um, let's see what else we got here in the comment section before I get to just – I just tonight, I just really wanted to share my screen, go through some of the things I've seen on Twitter. Um, just kind of – Okay, cool. Because I, I, had, I had something many controversial to say, 
but I don't think we even had a time or apparatus. No, let's get through it. No, we're gonna get through that controversy. We gotta get that controversy. It's, it's many, have... it's many. I have a many controversial statement. All right, let's get through these comments and then we'll get to your controversial statement and we'll go from there. <laughs> we'll see how the show goes. I'm vibing. Y'all vibing, y'all having a good time. Hey, tap in with us in the comment section. What we got here? I'm expecting at least two interceptions from Stafford. That's from AJ. Um Matthew Stafford, I've seen like, you know, you've seen the graphs and the charts comparing Jimmy G to Trey Lance and like, you know, the way that they've been able to distribute the ball and all the EPA and all those, you know, stats that I don't even fully understand. I've also seen a lot of stats recently of Jared Goff versus Matthew Stafford and kind of like where they're at and how the team is done. And it's been very similar. And like Stafford's definitely more dangerous. He definitely yeah. scares you more, all those sort of things. Right. But it's like when you look at it, he's had a lot of turnovers this year. It seems like we talk about Jimmy G so much. And how do you not see this linebacker? How do you fumble here when nobody? I mean, Matthew Stafford, Doing let's, let's, let's yeah, let's call it. Let's call it how it is. Like we I mean, Jimmy G, like as I feel like as faithful sometimes and JB says this a lot. Look. I think Jimmy G is Jimmy G. I, you know, it's not, he's not a great quarterback. He's not a terrible quarterback. I feel like you got to have context. You got to have, um, you know, just be sane about it, be objective about it. And but I feel like this fan base, we are so thirsty, don't have any patience. And, you know, I, he's had injuries. He's had a lot of things to be disappointed in for him. So I get that. But there, it could be worse. It could be worse. It could yeah. be better, but it could be worse. And <laughs> and not to say that Stafford is a worse option than Jimmy D. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that other – if your name is not Aaron Rodgers, you know, these quarterbacks are out here throwing picks. Like, it happens. So, <laughs> just saying that. Um, Brad Brown saying he watched uh, JTL Sullivan's breakdown. We're going to get to that, actually. Um, I saw JTL Sullivan's breakdown, and there's two points that, I, that he made that I wanted to bring up. Um, he's been doing a great job. I actually tapped in him, tapped into him from this offseason as well. I feel like his channel really got, you know, started growing from just all the quarterback talk. And we were doing yeah. everything we could to watch any sort of film and break down on all these guys, man. So um Ryan Ken is saying, I'm scared of this game, bro. Like, I think you should be. I'm not gonna, I'm the optimistic glass half full guy. I'm not gonna say don't be <laughs> scared. Like, nah, like be scared, but at the same time be appreciative of the season. And I would say this, like the main thing with like the whole being scared and stuff like that. Don't get, I just don't want it to be a situation where if Trey has a bad game in this tough spot, tough situation, we come into the off season with bad vibes. I don't want that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like, and we still could win. Even We still could make the playoffs, even if we lose technically. Right. So, you know, there's that too, but I just feel like regardless of what happens, keep the context of this is his third start. You know, you, there's always going to be the debate of did sitting him help his development or did it not help his development? We'll never know the answer to that truly, but this is his third start. So if you're of the camp that he didn't really gain that much ex you know, experience and knowledge by being on the bench, then this is, you know, basically a preseason. It's not even a full preseason for him, essentially. So, you know, we definitely got to keep that in mind. Um, train ready to hit those quick reads. My comment on that, Brad Brown, would be if he's not ready to hit the quick reads, is he ready to be quick enough to get around the pressure and make some plays happen secondarily? Because it's okay to not hit the quick reads if you can make something happen. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So if you can make something happen, great. But I, this is the type of game where it's going to be tough, I think, to make something happen. But we'll see. My, my uh, high school basketball coach, I never played uh, football in my life. My I went to such a small um, – you know, college prep, private school. We didn't have a football team. My graduating class was like 80 students, super small. <laughs> um, and JB, you know, I went to all his games, everything like that. He went to a, a bigger uh, school out there in the Bay. And, you know, he um, ended up getting the scholarship to Cal. He played uh, safety at Cal. And, you know, I was always vicariously living my football through him. My basketball coach, my favorite basketball coach in high school, he always told me the hardest thing to do in sports is to beat a team multiple times the right. same team multiple times that is the hardest thing to do in sports it doesn't matter if it's a team that's you know you're you're much talented then and you know the, the spread is 10 points and it, like it throw that stuff out the window when it's a division game division games get weird we've seen that it seems like the seahawks absolutely have our number we absolutely have had the rams number the rams have absolutely had the seahawks number like it's just that's just how division games go sometimes but like i said like we were saying earlier it's hard to beat a team multiple times it's just, it's hard to do that. <laughs> you heard, man. This ain't Crocker. No, this is not Crocker. This is Biamechi and All Day, not JB. We 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 switching it up today. All right, it's different <laughs> vibes right now going on. Um, 
let's see what we got. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, stack the box and treasure. Like I said, they, they they can stack them. Like you said, he get around that pressure. You talking about they in man to man? He could be still running. So it's it's plays like that that he have to make to make them change their. I, I feel like if Trey can do something early, mm. well, it's a forty yard run. I know that sounds mm. like that's extreme. Right. Or a bomb. It right. can it can get their D coordinator to you know maybe change some things up. But otherwise, yeah, they they they, they gonna they gonna try to pressure him and throw exotic stuff at him. They they're not gonna probably. Drop seven. I don't see them dropping seven too many times. Uh, and they got players, man. I'll, I'll be interested to see if he goes against Ramsey. You know, I'll be interested to see if he tests that at all. I'll be interested to see, like, Trey plays with some confidence. So I'm I'm just excited for this game. Again, like, yeah, you could be scared. You could be all – but, like, it's embracing the unknown. And I feel like – I guess my opening statement was about we kind of had this arrogant, assume we're going to win type vibe. Nah, let's not have that. But we can still be excited it. for this game going into it. Like, anything goes – we're the hungry team. We're the hungry team. Like we 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 need to win this game to get in. And we talk about the Rams all we want. But let's talk about us. And when our back's against the wall, when Shanahan's back is against the wall, playing this rookie quarterback, not what he wanted to do, all those sort of things. What is is Shanahan going to be disrespectful, Kyle? That's what we want to see. That's what we want to see. Uh, we got a comment from Mac Dre, RIP man. If Jimmy is ready, he should play. Uh, I disagree with that because me too. What is ready? Like. Jimmy, we saw him. We know that he – I think about the Miami game last year where he just was terrible. And Oh, you know, yeah, he was. He was, yeah. Because he was playing injured. And when we look at, like, the Colts game this year, you know, where he's coming off this injury, the the, the Cavs situation. He just wasn't – I know it was rainy and stuff like that, but I don't I don't get the sense that Jimmy is one of those guys. Aaron Rodgers right now is playing with, like, a – I don't know what he's playing with, some sort of foot situation. Yeah, it's it. Mm -hmm. It don't matter. Like it's Aaron Rodgers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jimmy G's not that. And that's no, not a not. that's not a knock. It's just being real. You know what I mean? So um, let's get to a few more of these before I want to get to your controversial statement. Um <laughs> I'd rather us win and have momentum going into the playoffs. Let's be thankful and be humble. That, exactly. Let's be Absolutely. thankful and Absolutely. be humble. Yeah. Let's be thankful and be humble. I'm not, and I'm gonna come into that stadium. The the fun thing about it, the fun thing about it is it's a home game. You know what I'm saying? We go into LA. And we so know it's really gonna be, be really be real like that. It's a home game. It's it's gonna be like it's a home game, and the stadium is so. I went there for the preseason game against the Chargers this this uh, preseason, and the stadium is, I mean, it's it's fantastic, and it's just so far. It's, it's gonna be so you gotta get there, man. It's gonna be, and you gotta get there uh, uh, for the Super Bowl when we when we uh, play there for the Super Bowl. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. We gotta, you know, I just feel like it's a perfect situation for us to. You know, get this upset, man. So we'll see what happens, man. I, there's plenty of comments here. Make sure y'all tap in in the comment section. If you have any questions, if you have any statements, please let them be known. We will get to them. But I gotta hear what all day has been thinking. He said he got some big controversy, some big statement that he's been brewing up. Like, what's going on, family? What's going on? I don't know how it came to me. I would say that I didn't do I didn't do any Google or paperwork research. So I don't know if I should preface it first. I'm just going to say it. Jimmy Garoppolo is the worst 49er of all time. Bro, what? Again, I know it, that, that when you hear that statement, the first thing you think about is what? That he's probably the sorriest. No, I'm not saying that. He, he's been Yo. plenty of guys less talented. Yeah, you, 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 you didn't lie when you said controversy right there. It's controversial. He's, he's, gonna, he's worse than why. Michael James, worse than Kyle Williams, worse than – Kyle is the only one that rivals him, but I'm going to explain why he beats Kyle. Bro. I'm going to explain why. The you Kyle gonna, you're going to have them hot in the comment section. You're going to have them – I already know. The Jimmy comments going to be crazy. Is the worst 49 ever when, you, when all things are considered. Kyle Williams, no doubt, he thought that he could fool – let, 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 let's let's summarize it. Kyle Williams thought that he could fool the NFL cameraman when the ball hit his leg, right? That was his first muff. He didn't fumble it. He didn't, it wasn't a talent. He just thought he, he was stupid. He was stupid. The ball hit your leg. Just go get the ball. Fall on the ball. But instead, what did he do? He thought he could play it off and nothing, nobody ever knew. They replayed it. Giants ball. Okay, the next one. If you look at it, I'm not saying Kyle would have ran a 75 yard punt back, but Kyle fumbled standing up. He was just weak. A dude arm tackled him and he fumbled. But no, don't get it twisted. Kyle is is Even results are results though. It don't matter. You know right. he, he still did it. So it's fast like, forward to Jimmy. 
Jimmy was traded for, unlike Kyle, number one. So we we used assets to get Jimmy. Cool. Jimmy gets their win, what, five games in a row? Yeah. Six five, games in a row? Five. So now, obviously, quarterback, trade, money, expectations are high. He curse, carelessly hurts himself against the Chiefs. And I say that because it wasn't like he was he got sacked or he scrambled and got hit. He, he, he was out of he was he could have went out of bounds. He tried to cut back. Like, why, Jimmy? Why? We down two touchdowns. What are you trying to prove against the Chiefs when he tore his knee up? So you broke our hearts by again, he could have tore his knee up the next week, the next play, but the fact that he cut back and hurt himself. That's that was strike one. That was strike one. Jimmy Garoppolo, you are a franchise quarterback. Franchise quarterbacks don't do that. You don't cut back when you're not even a scrambling quarterback. Lamar Jackson hardly does that. Why are you doing it? Okay, so boom. <laughs> then we go to the Super Bowl. Cal Williams, no doubt, hurt us for going to, but we have no proof that we would have beat the Patriots, right? We feel like we would have, but we have no proof. The Giants beat them, but we have no proof that we would have went on and beat them. Jimmy Garoppolo had a 10-point lead. And whether I got some people that say, or most people say Kyle Shanahan should have ran the ball more. And then I got, I got a homeboy who's very adamant that he watched the film and the chiefs were shooting gaps and Kyle felt like he couldn't run. We'll probably never know the truth unless Kyle tells us we have 30 for 30 on it, but he felt like Kyle couldn't run the football. And if we look at the Super Bowl in the fourth quarter, even despite the run plays that wasn't called, Kyle drew up plays where Kittle was open. Manuel Sanders was open. I think he was like one plan where most of it was in a flat open. And Jimmy just couldn't be, maybe he couldn't be accurate. So when it comes to losing a Super Bowl, to me, Jimmy is more to blame than Kyle Williams for losing a Super okay. Bowl. Make sense? You okay, so yeah. I, I, I think it's a language uh, a language breakdown for me because okay. <laughs> when you when you say well, how did you preface this? You said Jimmy G's the worst 49er the of all time. Of all time. I think I think all things considered. I would substitute what you're saying. You're you're to and you're what you're saying is he's the most disappointing. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Of all time. Yeah. That's that's really what you're saying because you're factoring in expectations, like the all money, these various things, the money, the money. um, you know, because it's like if you're saying he's the worst. You know, you can break down like he's starting. I mean, he's he's playing over you know C.J. Beathard, Nick Mullins, right, all, yeah, the, all the worst Nick Sudfield. Yeah. Like how you know it's like how would that even work if he's starting <laughs> right. over them? I mean, we've seen how those guys are, and you look at his record, and yeah, you don't you don't want to put all that on him, but playing the quarterback position is always you know if I had to rank even on players on this team, playing quarterback just it's going to elevate you so much because that position That's means true. so much. It's not even like you'd have to break it down and segment it into quarterbacks versus like position players and skill. Like you have to break it down that way. I think to really have a fair apples to apples, you know, who's the worst, who's the best, all, you know, errors, all these various things. I don't even like comparing with previous errors because it's a whole different game getting into all that. But what you're really talking about and what we can have a conversation about is, is he the most disappointing 49er Absolutely. of all time. And I think when you factor in all those things I just said, like him playing quarterback, um, you know, the fact that he has won so many games, but not won these big games, you know, things like that. Um, you know, I, I would think, uh, you know, it's tough. I had, you know, I wasn't really prepared for this question off the top of my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I no. mean, off, off the top of my head, I mean, disappointing. <sighs> the guys that I'm thinking of instantly, the first one that's coming to my mind is Colin Kaepernick. And the reason why I say that is because if you remember, you know, you're talking about expectations and those sort of things. If you remember, Jaw said, you know, this he could be the greatest quarterback of all time. And what I think he meant was he has so much potential with his physical attributes, with his skills. He, if he unlocks that and he continues along the path he's going, you know, look out. He could be one of the all time greats. And you saw that. I mean, think about that Packers game. The first playoff game he had against the Packers where he had the NFL record for rushing yards. Mm -hmm. That's still the NFL record, I believe, for, for most rushing yards by a quarterback in a game in the playoffs at that. And so, you know, just how electric he was when he came onto the scene. Uh, and it's funny because, you know, I think Grant was saying, uh, you know, Colin Kaepernick's first start against the Chicago Bears on uh, Thursday night, uh, Monday night. Football? Monday night. Yeah, Monday, yeah, Monday night. night football. He basically had an identical um, stat line to Trey Lance against the Texans other than the uh, interception that Trey Lance threw. But essentially, like Colin Kaepernick had so much talent man, so much the physical ability, all those sort of things. But he wasn't able to unlock it. And I always remember if y'all remember, I know y'all remember the. Uh, 
I don't know what year it was, the Cardinals game <laughs> where we were playing the Cardinals and Cap had the worst game I've probably ever seen by a quarterback ever. He must have had – he had a pick six to Tyron Matthew for the Cardinals at the time. He had – uh, probably had three or four interceptions. I don't remember. I, it just he couldn't even get the ball down the field. It was easy. And I remember they were after the game, like they were, you know, saying the Cardinals were saying things in a post game press conference about how it's easy to, you know, play against them and all those sort of things. Kaepernick is a guy that comes to mind just because he had so much potential and he a- achieved a lot of it because of the success that we had, uh, similar to Jimmy, the success we had getting us to the Super Bowl. Um, fighting back in that game, like that's one thing you can say about Cap's performance in the Super Bowl versus Jimmy is like, you know it wasn't like it was cap's fault per se. You know, you can talk about the coaching, you can talk about the defense, you can talk about a lot of things, um, just not going our way. The re- <laughs> well, I mean, you can talk about the referees in, in the Kansas city super bowl as well. Yeah, that's true. That's but, true. um, you know, cap's the first person I think of the next, I, I guess like if there's somebody else, I just, I, I look at the receiver position oh. because we had such great receivers in, you know, Jerry Rice and T.O. Some of the, you know, two of the all time greats, uh, the all time great. And then T.O., you know, the top three, top four, all time great. Um, I just whether it be Crabtree, Crabtree, you know, he wasn't like he wasn't, you know, bad. He wasn't like terrible, but like I, he was disappointing. You know, I feel like Crabtree was disappointing to me. I don't know what y'all feel like, Faithful, but Crabtree. Um, gosh, I don't know. AJ Jenkins, but see, the AJ, the the draft picks like AJ Jenkins, they just a lot of us didn't want them for this to start with, you know. So it's kind of like, well, we got this guy anyway. Yeah, you know. Uh, so what LL say? Yeah, I didn't roll the defense and running game. Yeah, no, yeah. Because I mean, that Green Bay game and then even the the Atlanta game, you know, was mainly. We we wouldn't have been able to come back. I I loved Alex Smith by that time. You know, we had, we all had, you know, different feelings on him, but then by that time, Alex had started being loved by four down fans. And then he got hurt. He got hurt. You know, it wasn't our fault. We didn't we didn't want him to get hurt per se. We we felt we felt good with Alex. Mm-hmm. But then we saw Cap and we was like, oh my goodness. And then that playoff game, like you said, 180 rushing yards and Atlanta being down. Cause we was down that whole playoffs, Vic Fangio was the Whatever at halftime he did, he he did. But for some reason, we just – Green Bay jumped off 23 points, I think, at halftime. Atlanta had us, what, was it 17 to nothing or something like that, NFC Championship game? Mm-hmm. You know, so it's games like that where you're like, well, no, I don't think Atlas could have came back and won those games. Uh, but, yeah, he uh, said <laughs> so you got to be trolling. <laughs> <laughs> they, they said they said he's the Albert Hainsworth of QB contracts and play why is that whack ass smile on the sidelines when losing? And y'all be going after Jimmy. Well, y'all be on his neck, man. Like Jimmy, I was mad when we paid him that fast because I felt like let him play another season and then or franchise, you know, yeah, franchise him. I franchise want, him. I, I liked I liked the decision. I, I liked the decision at the time. Um, and I, I'm not a big, I'm a big process, not result person. So like, I'm not going to go back and have revisionist history. I liked the decision to pay him because it was coming off of, if you remember like the Kirk Cousins situation where Washington was franchising him every year. And it just wasn't, I feel like if it's another position, running back, receiver, whatever, you can go ahead and do that franchise. What do you want the stability and have a team know you behind Yeah, if you, if you want to do that to Debo even, like because of the injury history, you know, it's like, sure, franchise him. But when it's the quarterback, it's like, you know, the owner, the coach, the quarterback, or owner, GM, coach, quarterback. Like, that is like, that's that's your team. Like, that's showing the direction you're going. Like, even if he gets hurt, you want to have some stability and like, no, this is our guy. This is the guy we're behind. So I felt like he wasn't, he wasn't worth the contract in terms of what he did. But because he was up for a contract and that's what the market was, it's just business. And I, it affects our team. It's not like I'm saying, like, you know, I, I get how it affects our team and like all those sort of things, but it was just business because of the timing. Jimmy G is one of the most, I don't want to say luckiest. He put in that work. He got drafted. He, you know, did everything he did, but he just, he was very fortunate, you know, to come yeah, in. Fortunate. He, he, the timing fe- of everything. Right. He, he fell, he fell in good places when he was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. In, and that's a lot, not, a lot you of know, things worked in his favor. A lot of stuff was lined up for him. Exactly. So he still, he still had to he still had to do the work, like you say. He still had to do the work. Uh, but hey, we got Chris. Chris agrees with you. If you're saying most disappointing, he's saying a thou- I don't even know what this is. What is this? A, a trillion? A trillion percent accurate? Who else could you yeah. compare him to? AJ Jenkins again. AJ Jenkins. Yeah, he was a first round, but there, there's first round busts. I think to be disappointing, I don't know. Yeah, like, expectations, and then you have to have 
if you're gonna be a first, if you're gonna be a first round bust, you have to be like a quarterback, and you have to be like the the number one pick in the draft or like the number two. You know what I'm saying? You got to be like 30, a top he was three. thirty one, right? A thirty. Exactly. Yeah, he was up there. He yeah, he, yeah, he was more like a a cherry like, on top. Exactly. Like, so you don't want to you don't want to miss with the Jimmy Ward, the AJ Jenkins. You don't want to miss with them, but at the same time, you're not expecting them to come in and you know do a whole lot uh, instantly. Anyway, not instantly. You don't expect instant instant payment. You know, right. unless you. You know, who was that? Was it not Zach Martin? It was uh the center, the Cowboys. We traded Eric Reed, and they got the center, the one that I think he had sick or something. Like him, he was instant all pro form. Uh oh, you're talking about um uh the, the Cowboys the, 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 took a center, but they traded with us. We got we traded for Eric Reed, mm -hmm. and they later on took the center with like the 31st mm -hmm. or 30th pick. I forgot who he was, but most times them them guys 25 and below you. You're happy if they even make a Pro Bowl within two, three years. Yeah, the draft, the draft is a crapshoot, man. The draft yeah, is a crapshoot. It's just, it's just, you know, when you come in with all that, he's a generational talent and yada, yada, yada. Like, I mean, you know, I, that's that's when you get into, like, disappointment. Or, you know, you could put it to injuries, too. I know in the NBA, like, Greg Oden is an example of that. It's somebody who just, you know, couldn't stay healthy. And it's like, damn, like, it's disappointing because you think about what could have been. But, you know, I, 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 I think it wasn't – if you make it – the most costly, the most disappointing, then I got you, man. Like, I'm with you on that. Like, the controversy is gone. But if you say right. he's the worst ever, <laughs> say controversy because you, hey, that's controversy for sure. Because, yeah, that's controversy for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was fortunate to be white. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know. Are you saying? I, I, I suppose. <laughs> I don't, we can go a lot of different ways with that one. Um, yeah. All right, so I want to get to some things on Twitter. First, before I do that, I know we had a comment. I don't know where it went, but somebody was asking how they can get a hat. Um, you know, definitely, definitely, definitely tap in. Follow uh, all the platforms. Follow us on Twitter. You see all day rocking the red and white. Um, Frontline. Frontline all the time. You already know what it is. Frontline all the time or all day in 49365. It's just you got to keep it going. It's all day, every day. That's It, it, it feels right to have you on the show. We can't not have four nine three six five and not have all day, all day right. on it you know what i'm saying like we gotta it just makes sense we just had to do it um and speaking of a uh, frontline sports media make sure you follow all the accounts you can get the links in the bio um for you know information on how to buy it F uh, find the link on twitter um you definitely can see right now we're streaming uh, at four nine x three six five i just put a link in um with the at for the frontline sports media page so definitely tap in buy your hat support the channel Croc got a lot of good things coming up. I ain't gonna lie. It's not just hats. It's other gear. It's it's a lot of activities, man. We're really trying to do something with this, and it's not just buying the hat and you know sporting some fashion. It is dope, but it's also just tapping in um, to the team and supporting. You know what I'm saying? Anything you could do to support. And what you guys can do right now, if you don't have the money or don't have the ability to buy a hat right now, like hey, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. It don't cost you nothing. That's a free ninety nine. So we appreciate all the love. And I wanted to get some love right now to the graphics team um, with Frontline Sports Media because they've been going crazy. Um, it's a lot of things we have coming up. Um, I definitely want to, you know, keep you all abreast of it, give you a little sneak peek of some of the things we got going on, man. We had the the, the, the logo they just did for the Tonight Show, man, with uh, JB and your boy being Mechi. So, you know, it's looking nice. Shout out to Marco. Um, I don't know if he's in the comment section right now, but definitely big shout out to Marco. Uh, and that's going to transition to going through Twitter. Um, I definitely wanted to uh, bring a few things up from Twitter and get your thoughts on it all day. Um, okay. Just some random clips. If you got time to rock with us and vibe with us, um, we can go through these clips from Twitter. And then after that, you know, we could take a few more questions and wrap up the show from there. But, uh, but yeah, we're just going to vibe, man. It's, it's a tonight show. It's a different vibe, man. We're just chilling. The morning shows will be hot. You get the, 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 the Monday morning QB. You got the energy. You got the debate shows, all that. We just vibing, man. Like I said. Get your drink. I got, I'm sipping on my um, Pellegrino. Get your drink, whatever you're sipping on, alcoholic, non-alcoholic, whatever you got to do, just vibe out. Again, this may be the last week talking about having a game the upcoming week in the season. This might be it. I don't think it's going to be, but we got to appreciate, be thankful, be humble, and just vibe out, faithful. If y'all tapped in, tap in. All right? So let's get to some of these things on Twitter. The first thing I wanted to bring up was something from the QB Collective. They've been making a lot of posts. Uh, recently in the recent days and uh, if y'all remember QB Collective is uh, something that the Shanahan's are directly involved with uh, sort of a quarterback sort of tutelage program but it's also involves a lot of NFL coaches and you know things like that I never hear 
from our offensive line coach ever. Right. I don't even know. Like I, I didn't even know who our <laughs> offensive line coach was. So like there's a few clips of some coaches I wanted to play real quick. It's just interesting to hear what they kind of have to say, because these are guys like, you know, football, there's so many damn coaches, people doing different things. And it's just interesting to hear the different aspects of the team that we don't really we talk about Jimmy G, you know, every episode, the whole season. You know, what I mean, like that's all that's the only talking point when there's so much more to it. So I just wanted to play this. And in, in, uh, I had a few thoughts on. It's not just um, our O-line coach, but Rich Gangarello is on here. Um, our offensive coordinator is on here. So we have a lot of a lot to get to. Let me play this real quick. I don't even, I hope the volume is going to work. Let's see. Can you hear that all day? I, no, I don't hear anything. Ah, uh, damn. All right. Well, he's saying he don't hear it, so I can't even I can't even play. No, I can see it, but I don't I don't hear anything. Yeah. Yeah. It's all good. Um. We're going to work on with that audio. But, yeah, it was just interesting to me to to see some of the things that they had been posting lately on the QB Collective. Uh, I remember there's a lot of buzz with them. or You know, people thought we were going to get Justin Fields because there was that link because uh, Justin Fields was somebody who was, you know, involved in the QB Collective. Um, since, since, since he was like a senior in high school and something like that, right? Exactly. Exactly. So, but it didn't, it didn't end up happening. Let me know in the comment section if y'all could hear that audio. All right. Tap in with me if y'all can hear the audio. But for now, I'm going to skip over these QB Collective clips. But if you do get a chance, y'all see the Twitter. You can watch them for yourselves. I ain't got to, you know, share my screen to do this. But it was just interesting to hear basically what the O-line coach was saying is that, you know, you typically don't hear from an O-line coach. You're never really going to have to at this stage in your careers as quarterbacks. These guys are all, you know, seniors, juniors, et cetera, in high school. At this stage of your career, you're not you're really not going to worry about too much of the line. But once you understand how the line is aligned, you can get different tells about – where the play is going, where the defense is going, what defensive coverage is being shown. And being a quarterback is all about getting as much information as you can. I guess one of the main things, and this is football in general, football is chess with people. You know, it's it's chess. It's a it's a thinking strategy game that's very visible at the same time, which is why I love it. You know, and it's uh, it combines both of those elements. And especially with the quarterback position, the hardest position to play in sports, um, one of the reasons why – it seems like we got Trey Lance is because he seems to be very smart. You know, he seems to be very sharp. And we even see from the press conferences, I know he's only given us a glimpse of things, but he's able to just, you know, break things down. And I, you get the sense in that from every, what everybody said, I remember Daniel Jeremiah was super high on Trey Lance and about his cognitive abilities. And these are the things that, you know, these are the things that, that matter when you talk about quarterback play, understanding all the different uh, details of the game that give you just more information to make so a decision. Be so be for, for me piggyback on that. So is that why maybe a lot be the wrong way, but that's why some of us 49er fans are frustrated is that we was told that's why, cause I mean, that's why as a fields guy, like I'm not, I'm like you, I'm not going to switch it up and like, no, I was always Trey Lance. No, I was fields guy. You know that. I mean, Trey Lance was second. I didn't want anybody else per se that would have been available, but I think McCorkle. Well, <laughs> but is that we was told that you didn't want fields or we was we kind of came to the conclusion that fields wasn't taken because Trey seemed to be more further along and smarter when it came to pro or whatever. So the fact that he wasn't, you know, quote unquote, ran out there mm -hmm. when it when, you know, we two and five or three mm -hmm. and six. I think that's what got us like with your point about the, you know, this could be our last week. Mm hmm. Yeah, I, I I mean, I, go ahead. No, I think I think to that, that's a good point that you bring up. But I think the way I interpret it, and it's hard, I, I kind of give up a little bit because it's been a little confusing. This whole season has been a roller coaster. I, I can't fully get into the mind of Shanahan. I can't. Right. I, I've yeah. tried. I can't. You know, it's like I, I wish, especially like having a show, having a podcast, having all these faithful tap in. And they, you know, I, I don't know what to tell y'all because it's been confusing for me. You know what I mean? Like all the we're all tapped in. We all none of us are any different. You guys follow all the you know, the, the ins and outs, you watch all the podcasts, you watch all the content creation, you see the articles, you look at the press conferences, like we're all looking at the same stuff and it's hard to tell. My interpretation of it is that number one, Trey Lance is super young. And super young. although he's super smart and all these things that, you know, they rave about, the point is he still is very raw as a prospect. Just he's young. He's young. I don't even feel like I don't want to say raw as a prospect because there's a lot of things that made him more pro ready to your point. The offense he played in, uh, the cognitive ability, all these things that we heard, but he is young. And I, you know, 
this is probably not high on the totem pole of reasons, but I think a little bit of it could be a little ego thing with Shanahan of like, you know, I can't have this young 20 year old coming in, just mastering this offense. Like, no, nah, it's going to take you time to make sure we do it right. <laughs> That's funny. We gonna... I never thought about that, but that could be, I, I think a little yeah. bit of that, but, but more importantly, what I've been thinking in recent weeks is it's more about, he may know where to go and we'll, we'll get to some clips here in a little bit that actually kind of prove this point, but he may know Trey Lance where to go in the play, what the defensive coverage is, all these sort of things, but he doesn't have the experience of actually playing at this NFL level. So even though he may have that cognitive ability and whatnot, Shanahan doesn't trust what he's going to do when it's going to actually be, you know, the Friday night light or the Sunday night lights are on and, uh, you know, it's game time. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't know how that's going to turn out. And to me, it's like the only way you're going to know is if you put him in. And it's like you might as well put him in from the beginning. But I think Shanahan, you know, uh, Shanahan, I think another thing with the ego, right, is I'm not sure, again, how much this played to the factor. Maybe it's a small factor. I don't know what the level of a factor it is. But coming into the season, right, if we would have won against the Titans um, or any of those, you know, if we would have won just one more game at this point, uh, I think I'm not 100% correct. Y'all can tap in on the comment section. Let me know if you can look this up. But I think, I believe that Shanahan is basically two games uh, below 500 for regular season in his career. And I, I want to say he's two games below 500. I could be wrong, but I want to say he is. And I think, like, basically, he was doing everything he could to win games because he doesn't have time to make it's, it's his legacy, too. You know, like, yeah. that, all that stuff, ego wise and stuff, I think that, that plays a role. Again, I don't know how big of a role, but I think it plays a role. And he just feels more comfortable that, you know, Jimmy, you're going to have to live with some things. You're going to have to, he's not, he's not, you know, he's not going downfield. He's not going to the sideline. He's fumbling the ball. He's making a pick, you know, all these various things. But, at the same time, you do know what you can expect from him. And some of it's going to be inconsistent, but you, he kind of gets the ball out quick, and you and you know what you can do with him under center where Trey Lance is a little bit of an unknown. And I think he – it's almost like, you know, Kyle Shanahan, he has this new toy in Trey, and he's just – he wants to groom it the right way. You know, he doesn't want it to get bad habits. He doesn't want it to, um, you know, freestyle too much, you know, Shanahan, he's a big fan of Lil Wayne, but I don't think he likes freestyling quarterbacks. You know what I'm saying? He wants them to go where they want to go with the with the offense, exactly how it's dialed up. And so actually, I think that's a good transition to some of the some of the clips I wanted to show from Twitter. But one of the things I wanted to show was uh Quincy Avery just posted. Uh he said, You want to know, what do you say? Want to know who lead their team to the playoffs as a first year starter, Jalen Hurts. And you know, to me, I brought up this tweet because you know, Kyle Shanahan. Uh, you know, we people have talked about our quarterback coach. People have talked about do we have the right people in place for Trey to properly develop? You know, Rich Gangarello um, was with Jimmy originally, then he went to Denver and he came back to us. And you look at um, uh, oh, I'm forgetting his name right now. Um, the quarterback from BYU, um, who Zach Wilson was training with, uh, who uh, you know, um. played in the league. I don't know why I'm forgetting his name right now. Y'all tap mm. in the comment section and please remind me. I got him um, out of my head right Beck, John Beck. Beck. John Beck, John Beck, exactly. So, you know, people were saying, oh, could we get John Beck and put him on our coaching staff? And then I don't know if you saw earlier this year, but he went to the Jets coaching staff. I don't know if you saw that. But, uh -huh. John, yeah, John Beck is on the Jets. Because, um, see, I, I, thought, I thought Cal wanted to keep him outside so he can do – you know different, different things with nah, him. he's uh he's on the he's on the jets uh coach wow. i don't i don't know the extent of his role i don't know like what he's being but like he's with the jets right now and oh yeah you know, we can't I, use him more than he with the jets and, you clearly, know, not, and, not the clearly, and clearly zach wilson is there so you know there's that connection and that's what we were thinking maybe we would do but we didn't do that and you know trey lance he's worked out with you know beck and whatnot before but his real his you know he works with uh um Quincy Avery um quite a bit and it's just interesting you know it's just kind of another, another notch in Quincy Avery's um resume in terms of a guy that he's worked with in Jalen Hurts is playing really well this season and got to the playoffs and I, I you know it's 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 a stretch but I'm just looking at that I'm like okay like yeah we got one of them Quincy Avery guys he's gonna ball out for us you know next year like it's a, it's just a good sign he got another notch in the belt that's how I'm looking at the, that tweet right there man but does doesn't Trey just look much more competitive than Jimmy G. Like, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I'm, when you say competitive, what do you mean by that? I mean just the. I don't know, like, cause of course, obviously we don't have no proof. His third star coming up, yeah. so we don't have any proof. But it just, I don't know. He doesn't look. But again, I know, I know. The more you play, 
especially quarterback, you do start to not get so big and not get so small at moments. So maybe that could be it, but it's just right now it's like Trey wants it so much. But I guess that's not fair. I, I try to be still fair to Jimmy you know, G fans. I, I don't I think – It wouldn't be fair is that Jimmy G has been to a point where in his career now where him throwing a touchdown is not going – you know, excite him like that, like it would Trey. So I guess, I guess that makes. I just Jalen Hurts is what I'm saying. Like I saw Jalen Hurts compete. If he didn't have anything else, I said Jalen Hurts gonna try his ass off. I like his swag. Football game. I like his swag. He went. Love like his, his swag. I like his swag, bro. I really do. I, I like his swag. Be able to give you, he, give you a quick story before you get to that. I'm go you ahead. So USC Alabama in Arlington, uh, 20, 2016. Uh, didn't really expect to beat Alabama. But I got a close home Bulls Alabama fan. We was talking about the game for months, like the, the year prior. You know, it was one of those Labor Day games they had signed on to do, uh, you know, opening weekend games. So we was all talking about going. So we ended up going. And Jay Hurts came in the game. Like the game was really, if you look at the first quarter, I want to say it was 3 nothing or 7-3. to three. And, man, Saban made the move to Jalen Hurts. And along with their defense, they Alabama just shot off. And that was my first time seeing that kid. And I was just like, he's going to be a star. And this is before the, the NFL had even gotten to that, you know, system that he's in. They wasn't doing it like that. Mm -hmm. So he looked like a stretch at that time. Like freshman quarterback, no, nah, he ain't going to be no quarterback in the NFL. It didn't appear that way. Mm -hmm. But, man, I, I just I, I just believe so much Jalen Hurts. My brother is an uh, Eagle fan. I had texted him a little while ago. He mm -hmm. an Eagle fan. He had mentioned your Crabtree uh, crab oh, statement. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, 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 he don't care for Crabtree. I, I love Crabtree. He don't care for Crabtree, but yeah, I, I love I love the uh, the dance Crabtree did, man. That was that was my joint, man. The little uh, yeah. <laughs> crab joint. I used to always go crazy with that, but um, but yeah, not nah, Jalen. Jalen the baller. I like his uh, mentality. I like you know you know seeing him in the you know every every week before we play a team. I look at I like to look at the uh, the opposing teams like press conferences, like their interviews, all those sort of things. And I just remember when we were playing the Eagles, I was tapped into Jalen Hurts and. Um, yeah, I just I just rock with uh, you know his mentality more so. Grown man, he was a grown man at eighteen, yeah. like eighteen. And I, and I honestly like to, to your original point about uh, Trey being more competitive than Jimmy. I really like Trey's. Um, I like Trey too. I ain't gonna lie. Like he, I I like the way that he seems like confident in himself. He seems uh, you know, he's got a good head on his shoulders. Um, but at the same time, it's not like he's. He, he, it's similar to Jalen Hurts in the sense that, like, I don't feel like he's a too high on his highs, too low on his lows type of guy. It's pretty even kill, you know. But he, but he, you, you get the sense that he does care about football, and like, you know, being from like a small school and all those sort of things, I feel like that all those sort of things, you know, everybody has a story, man. Like everybody has a story, like what they overcome, what they went through, and everything like that. And guys like you know Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, it's great. Like you're a baller from day one. You national championship freshman. You you know it's like, okay. Well, do you have that hunger still? Like I don't know. I'm not. Do you have that hunger? And guys like Trey Lance, where it's like small school, and you know, should you come out? Should you not? Oh, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna bet on myself. I'm the third pick, but I'm still. I just feel like he has a story to him, and uh, you know, I, we're rooting for him, obviously. But uh, it, it'll be interesting to see, um, you know, how things play out. Uh. You know, we love to see the Baldy tweets, man. Baldy always oh Baldy the truth. Baldy the truth, man. He always he always breaking things down. Um basically, like it was interesting because in this breakdown, I don't know if you saw Baldy's breakdowns, but he was basically talking about how um basically every carry from Elijah Mitchell came out of the backfield. None, none of it was shotgun. None of it was shotgun carries, which was like, you know, kind of like at this day and age, that's almost unfathomable. <laughs> and I was thinking about the reason why I pointed out this clip is because is that an aspect of playing with Trey? That is it something where Kyle Shanahan felt more comfortable doing that? Or is no, this is what I want to do. I don't want to do that many, you know, I don't want to do all these shotgun plays and stuff like that. I want to do you executed this very well in North Dakota State. You that was one of the differences, right? Justin Fields never was in that never. Yeah, I, I remember right? that 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 not articles somebody somebody on Twitter posted how many under the snaps and we talked mm -hmm. about that on locker room back yeah. then yeah yes I think that's what got you to just be like hey, I think this Trey's is our big. offense our offense you, and what you Shane said at first you was like hey I, I know we've been high on fields man but I think Trey's the pick and I was like what why would you say and you said <laughs> the under the, the under the center like yeah, the I mean, under the center really that that was the kicker for 
Again, I, I'm not saying that's exactly why. Right, he but that, that was a factor. That's a, that's a, that was a, a factor, man. A that piece of a the factor. puzzle. That's a piece of the puzzle. And it's like when you, I just it was just, it was interesting to me that Baldy said that. And it's like, I just think, okay, so this one game against the Texans, right? This one game, one sample size, right? Like just one game. Elijah Mitchell takes all of his carries. Like none of his carries are from shotgun, <laughs> right? Uh, in terms of the average depth of uh, you know, target or the average depth of the completion. If you would include Jimmy G, it would have been Jimmy G's second highest since 2017 when he played the Texans. <laughs> you know, like if you're looking at EPA, this would be this be, Trey Lance's performance was higher than any other game from Jimmy G in terms of EPA. It's one game. I get it. It's the Texans. I get it. But those things are like that's pretty Silent. drastic. That, that's pretty drastic. You know what I mean? Like, what does that mean? You know, so that was just something that stood out to me in terms of. Is that where we're going to see less shotgun? And then when we do see shotgun, are we going to see some of that zone read and all those sort of plays? I wonder um, if that would have been Trey's 12th game, how it would have been. <laughs> like, that's what, like, you know, like. To, to the moon. That would have been Dogecoin. That's to the moon. Texans, like, what was going on? Texans, I wish the Texans was Trey's 12th game starting. And then what, what, what was the EP and, and stuff would have been then? I, you know, when he was basically he was uh, showing the interception on this on this play and, um, you know, just talking about how he didn't quite get it over. And it was interesting because he showed the following, you know, one minute essentially drive that he had to end the half and all the different completions he was making, uh, as you can see on the screen. And one of the things that popped out for me was I looked at I, I'm like I said earlier, I'm process over results, meaning I don't care. And I think PFF tries to do this, but I don't care if you know, Jimmy against the Bengals, uh, if Jesse Bates drops the pick and we end up winning the game, like, yeah, I care because, like, I'm juiced and I'm going to, you know, he still made the plays after. You got to give him that credit. But he could have he he could have lost the game if somebody just would have made that play, right? right. It, that's it, a, it wasn't a, yeah, right. That's, that's a negative on you. Like, I, I got it. I got to. I don't care what your interceptions are. If, like, guys are dropping all these other ones, you could have way more, right? So that's that goes as a negative in your in your book. For Trey in this game, you know, the play he had to, you know, the the, the last play before we kicked the field goal where we got that completion to Ayuk, I was like, man, like, that was a turnover worthy play. Like, he could have threw that pick right there. I got to – same thing I'd be doing to Jimmy. I got to knock him for that too. I got to be fair, be objective, both sides. But when I was playing it back, when Baldy was doing the slow motion on that specific play, I was like, he actually – the defender really had to jump to try to get that, and he didn't get it. It wasn't mm -hmm. like – it wasn't like he just dropped the pick or something. Like it, Trey got it over him. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, I, when I first was watching the game, I didn't really notice it like that. But watching it back, slow motion and all those sort of things, like, I was like, okay. Like, Trey, that was nice. Like, he really had the confidence of getting in there. And, you know, I just I, – I don't look at that as, like, a negative on that one. So, that's all I wanted to say about that specific play right there. Um, man, John Chapman. I definitely got to tap in with John Chapman. I know he's out here in Southern California like I am. So, I definitely got to uh, – yeah, him, point, him and Croc supposed to be doing something, right? Oh, yeah, he's doing an event. I'm definitely – so the thing is, because I'm, I'm out here, right? So I'm definitely going to tap him with Croc at some point. I think I might uh, tap, in, tap in with him from the airport. But I know, uh, you know, JB, he's bringing all the kids down. Like, he got four kids. He's bringing them all down. So we're going to go to Disneyland on Saturday. And I think that's when they're doing their event, John Chapman, all that. So um, definitely if I can make it, I'm definitely going to come through. But we're going to be at Disneyland. I don't think it's going to happen. So, you know, uh, it's going to be a good time, though, man. I'm definitely excited about this week. But – I, I know he posted uh, something from his podcast um, where he was talking about the talking about the play where Trey, you know, a lose in the pocket, makes some moves and able to get that check down. A lot of people were saying that was his most impressive throw of the game. I think Baldy said that. I believe uh, I think Rich from Madrid said that. There's a few people that are saying that was one of his most uh, impressive throws of the whole entire game. And I, I pulled out this clip. I don't know the audio is not working right now. I'll fix that for next time. But I'll put out the clip because. The way Chapman just said, like, man, if you think he's a, a, a running quarterback where he's not going to go through his reads, where he's not going to, then you're tripping. You're not watching something like you're, you're, you're tripping because it's like when you look at it, man, like that's one thing that you definitely can take away from this game. You can say what you want about Trey's athleticism. And I think hopefully, hopefully over time, he will be able to be a little bit more elusive, understand what he can do and what he can't do, you know, all those sort of things, get a few more yards. But the key thing that I took away is that when he does move around the pocket, when he does escape, he has his head up the field. Down field, yep. Mm -hmm. that, that's something that we saw. Like that is a good sign to me. Like that, that's what you want to see. You know, we'll see if it, if he can be consistent with that. You know, but it looks like, and that's something that maybe just being, you know, being on the ha glass half full side with Shanahan, maybe 
that's, you know, being on the bench and being so ingrained and doing these things that like you don't develop those bad habits. And when you're going to the actual game, now you can do it. I don't know. I don't know. But I, it, it could be a part of the equation on that. So, you know, just something interesting. This was a. I mentioned this earlier in the podcast, and I don't know if y'all saw this. Y'all definitely should look at this twist, this tweet. Uh, Crocker put it out on his Twitter. Um, it was a different angle of the touchdown pass to Debo, and the comment Croc was making was basically about like, look, George Kittle's out there getting juice. I know there's been a lot of talk about, you know, how does George Kittle feel about, you know, Jimmy G versus Trey, all those sort of things. But just from this play, and then also if you saw the mic'd up that just came out a little bit earlier today, um, George Kittle was mic'd up, and you know, on this play, you just see the energy, the love, the you know, George Kittle, he he, he a good guy, man. I think he just. It's been, you know, Jimmy's his day one, and he's trying to stick up. Yeah, with the day one, as much as multiple possible. touchdowns, like yeah. It's... But he's rocking with Trey, you know. It's like he he knows what it is, like he knows what it is. He's he's with the program, and uh, I just thought that was a dope clip that Croc played. But the reason why I showed it, and you can't hear the audio, so it's unfortunate. But y'all need to go back to that clip. I actually put it in the comment section right now. Y'all need to check out this clip, and I want y'all to listen to the crowd, listen to the stadium. It's as soon as. There's, it's like that bootleg kind of rollout situation, right? As soon as that happens, you're able to see, you know what I'm talking about? You're able to see the, the crowd, the energy. It's like Steph Curry and Oracle, like I said, back in the day, and Oracle shooting a three, and before the, the anticipation is like, it's like so no so other. Step past half court. As so soon as the, the anticipation court. is like, you hear it in the crowd, you feel it. And that was this, the, the feeling you got before he even threw the ball. He could have he could have just ran with it. He could have done a check down. And to me, like it just meant so. It was it was just special to hear that from that angle and hear the crowd. I wasn't at the game. I'm sure some of y'all that were actually at the game and could talk could tap in about this, you know, and talk about you know, um, you know, just uh being there and whatnot and how that felt. But to me, like just seeing that clip, I just posted it so y'all can tap in with it. But it just was something that was dope. Um, real quick, hold on, JB. Uh, JB, I think he's done with the. For real, the JB. He had to do. So I'm gonna send him this link. We gonna get him in this thing too, um, and go that way. Uh, but yeah, man, that that's that was electric. It was electric. It was just dope to see. It was dope to experience. And um, I had to put that clip up there, man. Just a few more. Um, like I said, if y'all didn't see the mic'd up with George Kittle, make sure y'all tap tap in with that. What else we got on here? Um. The Rich Madrid thread on if y'all don't have access to the all 22, y'all definitely need to tap in, check out the, you know, the Rich Madrid um, breakdown that he did because he was basically going through all the plays and there was a lot of positives. I, I feel like after the game, I was pretty sober, like, you know, Trey did cool. He had some struggles in the first half, but nah, like Trey was doing this thing. I'm not going to lie to you. He was doing this thing. Like, and then when you, when you watch it back, I just felt like he made a lot of plays and, you know, made that happen. What up, JB? Jay, man, what's popping, man? What we talking about, man? We 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 on this Trey day, man. What's up, man? Trey all all way, day, man. Trey. Adt. <laughs> yeah, all man. day. What he do? What he what he do, dog? Hey, hey, Memphis, bro. What's up with you? <laughs> better know it. Absolutely. Man. So you know, basically, uh, JB. What I was saying, and we kind of just were, you know, shooting the shit, just getting through the rest of the Twitter post that I wanted to get through, and I'm pretty much, you know, done with that. So I can get your thoughts. But JB, what I was saying is that I feel like. Overall, the faithful as a fan base, like we need to sober up a little bit because it's very possible that this could be the last week that we're talking about the faithful and what game we have for the following week. This could be the this could be it, you know. And I think like when you looked at those percentages and when you looked at those tiebreaker scenarios with us beating Philly and us beating Minnesota, we thought it was something different, you know. Like coming into the last week of the season, we thought it was going to be a, a easier path for us to get in, right? And you did. I did. I did. I did. <laughs> I did. I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. Not all of us did. I did. Um, but I think a lot of us did. And I think that's this, that was my message to the faithful as a whole. Maybe you've always, already been on that sober path, JB, but I just was saying, I think it's time to sober up a little bit. And not to say that, you know, be scared that this is going to happen. I'm like, but I'm just saying, be honest with the fact that um, especially us, right? Because we're going to the game, right? We're going to go to that thing. It might be, this has been a roller coaster of a season, the ups and the downs, the starting even with the off season. And it's so appropriate that all day is on this podcast tonight because like, you know, just starting with the off season and all the conversations about who we're going to draft and Justin Fields versus Trey Lance and then the Mac Jones and then the, the just all the excitement, the trade up, the 
all of that going through um calling for Shanahan's head, calling him Mike's son. You know, just all the ups and downs we've had. It's been a crazy season. And it could I be forgot about Mike Son. Mike Son, man. Mike I forgot son. about that. It's I been a long that. season. Hey, that, that's a so good thing content. if you forgot about it. I, I mean, did. I, I mean, actually forgot about right. it. Yeah. I did forgot and about it. But, 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 but to that. JB's point, like, you forgot about it because, you know, you put all that to, to rest because, you know, yeah. not all of it. But, you know, we've been playing. We he, were able to bounce he back. He coached better. Yeah, he, he coached, coached better. better. We were able to bounce back. You know, Jimmy, you know, played well. You can say what you want to say, but Jimmy played well. And we were able to be in this position to get into the playoffs with one game remaining. I'm excited. I'm respectfully concerned about the team we're playing. I know people feel like there's that arrogance. We own the Rams. I don't think that's in our favor. Uh, Sean McVay knows what the record is. You know, like they have something to play for now with, you know, having the possibility of having a home game. I don't know if yeah, they have what, a possibility. What exactly? I know they playing. They playing for the division, right? Because if right. they they're playing for the win, division, to win a division. Yes. They have to win this game, or the Cardinals have to lose. But yeah, they no, have no, to they, win. They, they, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, they have to win. So, and the Cardinals are playing the Seahawks, you know. So they have to win this game to win the division. And when they, winning the division means they get a home game, and they want a home game. Like that's just that's you know, of course okay. they want a home game. So they, they are motivated. So do you think they're gonna be hungry? Like, do you think yes. that? All right, the only re- the what the, I think you think they're gonna be more hungry to win a division, or you think they're gonna be more hungry to? to beat us because we beat them five times in a row and everybody keep talking about that. It don't matter. You can put 30% to that and 30% to that and the 60% hung- I mean, like, whatever. However you want to add it up, they both, the same scenario applies. They're going to be hungry regardless, <laughs> you know? Like, it's two different, it's I mean, two different yeah, areas that I they're mean, hungry yeah. from. So you, so you think they're going to be hungry? Yeah. The Rams, the Rams avoid, again, that we never know what's going to happen in the playoffs, but the Rams beating us, in their eyes, they avoid Lambo until the ultimate Time they have to go, cause they 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 lose. They the five seed. It's no it's no three. It's no four. If they lose, they are locked in. At unless you know, of course, Arizona loses too. But we assume Arizona gonna win, right? So the Rams go from two to five, and you know, you talking about like you said, no home game, playoff game. They'll go to what maybe Dallas, you know, maybe Tampa, maybe Arizona, and then they likely will go to Lambeau next. So they have a lot. Like I told I told them earlier, be. JB, we're more desperate, no doubt, because is we wanted. I mean, we have to win to get in. Yeah, but man, that second seed, that we can lose and get in too. We can lose and get in too. But we, yeah, yeah, we want to, we want to, we can. But you know, the Saints they playing like like people, bro. Like the Saints defense look crazy. Yeah, I'm like, damn. I don't know. It just seemed well. I I don't know. I just watched the game against when they played the Dolphins. And I'm just like, damn, like they look like they, and then they whooped, and they, the then they held thing. Brady too. So, you know, that's why Brady didn't score, right? That, huh? Yeah, zero, zero. I think that was the last three. It was Panthers, Dolphins, um, uh, Panthers, I think. And they, yeah. you know, they, Bucks, they, yeah, Bucks, Dolphins, Panthers, right? So, you know, yeah. well, I don't know yeah. if the Falcons are going to be able to put points up on them. And then Taysom Hill, like, I don't know, you know, he, I feel like all they got to do is score damn near two touchdowns, 14 points, and they'll win. I'm, I'm happy it's not in the Thunderdome. I'm happy mm-hmm. it's in Atlanta. That's a good thing. Atlanta True. did beat them. In, Atlanta went and beat them about, about a month ago. But again, okay. to me, that that it's, bodes. That's probably not a good thing. I mean, it's that it's that division stuff again, where it's right. just gonna be yeah. crazy. And I think, especially at the end of the year, I mean, you saw what the Falcons did when they played us. You know, last uh, what was it two years ago when they kind of you know they didn't spoil it for us, but they you know they, they could play have. that spoiler role, it. right? They play that they can play that spoiler role and. You know, so we'll have to see. I know Pitts is, I guess, has a hamstring. Yeah, I'm, um, looking, I'm, I'm looking it up right now as we speak. Like, it's Kyle Pitts playing. Damn. Yeah, and then we have our COVID situation, you know, which hopefully ah. doesn't get any worse. But that's like, you know, that just puts a downer. But I'm hopeful that because it was identified now, and I don't know in terms of, like, the vaccination situation, how all that's going to There's only out. one person not vaccinated. Oh, on, on the whole team? Yeah. Okay. It's only crap. one. Okay. So, well. Hopefully it's you not know, an A-B situation, that. and that's true. And, you know, we were able to just uh, – Yeah, I read earlier that as long as they're not showing any symptoms, they are all to be able to play. Right. I think they adjust – right. They want to see They want to see players play. Like, I, I think they adjusted the rules. Yeah, so they, they just have to lie and say they don't have any symptoms. <laughs> as bad as that sounds. It's true. That's, I mean – what Jimmy and Kiwan yeah. – Kiwan and Jimmy got to say, I don't have any symptoms. They say that Jimmy has COVID? Jimmy has COVID? Well, he's on the he – on, he on, on the list. He tested oh, on the okay. list. 
Oh, okay. Jimmy Ward. Jimmy Q1. Ward. Oh, I'm. <laughs> oh, you talking, you're talking about Jimmy G? Nah, hell no. Oh, no. Nah. Uh, nah, I, was... I was like, what? You got a thumb and COVID? Are you? What, what you, what you nah, doing? Jimmy, Jimmy Ward. I, Jimmy, I'm about to say I wish, but no. Nah. Nah, yeah, nah, but the NFL. Know. I mean, I don't blame the NFL, but I, I yeah. got sick of the stomach when they flex the Saints and Falcons to three o'clock with us. Well, I was, Memphis, Memphis time. It's one o'clock for y'all. Bro. Right, right. I thought I thought we were gonna get flexed for Saturday or Sunday night for sure. Me too. I like. I want get this shit out the way. I want to yeah. already know. So I want the Falcons. Hey, the Sunday night game before. gonna be lit too, though. I was just with a Raiders fan. I'm like, damn, it's it's the Raiders versus Chargers. It's like a playoff well, game. They they both got to win to get in. Right, you, you are, game, you're talking about Marcus? Yep. Okay, word, word. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's, so if they win, they're in? The Raiders? Raiders yeah, or Chargers. When they win, they in. So it's playoffs. And then, well, yeah. if they win, and then the Colts win, too. Because I feel like the Colts got to no, beat no, no. the Jazz. Just win it in. Or win they in. So win they in, bro. And then if the Chargers win, they in. So that's, that's going to be lit. Mm. Well, like I said, I do feel like the Rams are going to be hungry. We'll see how hungry. I mean, there's a lot of motivational factors. Who, who's starting? Who's starting, Trey or Jimmy? Trey. Trey. You think That's, so? Yeah, man, Trey. And I have you know, no doubt. <laughs> I have no I, doubt. I don't know. Trey. I don't know if uh, JB. I don't know if you had a chance to check out the um, QB Collective or not the QB. I, collective, I saw it. QB, I saw it. Yeah, with the JTO Sullivan. Yeah. What, what is this it. channel called? The QB. Is it the QB Collective? Yeah, I don't, QB breakdown, some shit like that. <laughs> well, I want to tell Brad. I thought the same thing. Brad thought about the two negative tests. But they the don't way? have to anymore. They changed it. Yeah. I yeah. saw Brad. Brad uh, said they have to pass two negative tests. NFL changed uh, that. Okay. Yeah, they, they just got to be asymptomatic. That's all. Okay. If they say yeah. they, they, say they don't have any symptoms, they can play. Yeah, but like I was saying, JB, like I was saying earlier, and we could wrap up soon. I just wanted to uh, make sure we got you on, man. It wouldn't be complete if uh, we didn't have you on, family. But uh, I definitely was saying earlier, you know, with Trey, it just seemed like from looking at all the breakdowns, whether it's from uh, Rich Madrid, from uh, Baldy, um, from uh, JTO Sullivan, it seemed like there was a few plays, especially in the first half, where Trey just wasn't letting the rip, um, similar to how, you know, Jimmy just gets the ball out quickly. That's his biggest attribute. That's his best attribute, right? Getting the ball out quickly on time when it's over the middle, all those slant plays and everything like that. It seemed to me like Trey just wasn't letting it rip, and that maybe was due to him being conservative and not wanting to make a mistake or not trusting his eyes and what he was seeing. Or You don't know. It was his first game back in a long time, so maybe it was just a little bit of a rust, but as the game went on, it seemed like he was making some plays. But there's a few plays, especially in the first half, where he didn't get the ball out, you know, on time to the reads that it seemed like were open originally. But he made some plays, like the one close by the end zone where he ended up throwing it to Ayuk, and we ended up getting that first down, right? He's able. The one it's where almost he like Sherfield too, right? He the one where he's Sherfield too. Those are those are the two ones that I wanted to specifically speak on. Like those two plays, I feel like those are the plays. Like those plays probably get Shanahan upset because Shanahan probably wants to see the ball get out, you know, hitting the target where it needs to be. He's thinking that okay, if you do that, you know, you're, we're in the end zone situation. If you scramble and it's Aaron Donald and it's Von Miller, and you know, like that could be a safety. That could be a safety hey, situation. Hey, I feel you, but it's like. I feel you. I guess I'm just looking at it because, you know, if they were positive plays and looking at it like he – I feel like Trey Lance, you know, I feel like he he's confident. I really feel like he's confident in his abilities and his talent. It's cool. You know, I feel like he really – the way he be throwing, like, you know, the balls he throw, and, and I'm like, you know, it's just like, all right, you're, you're, you really believe you got this, this arm talent. You really believe it because you really throwing these – you know, like the one the Kittle, like oh, you just you just really throwing these, the one the shirt field, like just off the back, like just fading backwards. I don't know, I just feel like all right, you you're confident. So that's what I like. Absolutely, we were talking about that too. He definitely seems confident, but you know, maybe it seemed to me like he had to get his rhythm going in the first half, like, and that's to be expected because it's essentially like, you know, it's some rest to to have where he's sitting on the bench for as long as he was on the bench. So, you know, but it's a big game. And I, I guess, like, you know, to close things out, that's just my – this is a different beast. This is a different beast. This is not the Houston Texans. This is a this is the, the Rams. And I know we've been beating them and everything like that. One of the things I was thinking, too, on that same topic of Jimmy get the ball quickly, to me, and I'm sure 
I would think y'all would agree. Maybe you could talk about the Chicago game, but I think to me, Jimmy G's best game this year was against the Rams. And I was thinking about it and I was like, maybe a part of that is because with their pass rush and the way, you know, that they can have penetration and stuff, Jimmy G's able to get the ball out quickly, which is especially helpful against a team you like think that. So he didn't really do too much against the Rams. I feel that like he was super was accurate. But he was huh? super accurate though. Like yeah, he, he only had like four, he, he only had like four incompletions, he, I think. It was just and it wasn't like be like he was hitting it right in stride in the like he was super he was like getting it in in that game. And I feel like that was his best game of the season. What, I mean, what would you say is better? The the like, Bears game or the I Bengals like, game? Honestly though, honestly, I like the uh the Bengals game. I know it was kind of you know, he threw that pick at yeah. the end that could have been a pick and yeah, you know, but I don't know. I just he like came that. back. I like yeah, that he, he came back. No, I got you. What, what, what you think all day? You got? <laughs> I know you're not the biggest Jimmy fan. The most disappointing for. Hey, earlier you missed it, man. Uh, <laughs> all day he was like, man, I got a controversial statement to make. You know, what I mean, I, I know you got an agenda with your show. We're trying to go through this thing, and but hold on, I got something to say that's super controversial. And uh, he basically said that uh, Jimmy G, he thinks, in his opinion, his humble opinion, is the worst 49er player of all time. Of all time, of all time, man. but I, but I, but I, all I, things, I, all things considered, I was able to, I was able to, you know, understand what he was saying, and really, what he was saying, we had to rephrase it, you know, um, really, what he was saying is that Jimmy G is the most disappointing Niner of all time. Okay, you know, I so, feel you. I mean, so, yeah, I, we all thought he was going to be the franchise guy, or I did, especially when he came in twenty seventeen. Yeah, so you know, but uh. I, all day. I don't know if you um you know had any had any thoughts about what you thought Jimmy G's uh you know the most disappointing nine of all time. What his best game was of this season? They all all his good games look the same. <laughs> the Falcons, the Rams, the the Bears, the Bengals. All his all his good games that we won look the same. All his average games that we happen to win look the same. All his bad games. Look the same, like, <laughs> I, like the Falcons and the Rams game look the exact same. The Rams just a better team, but we Bro. say so. You know what I mean? Like the same, the Rams, Bengals, and Falcons the same damn Jimmy G. I feel you. Like, the, I really, the I really Rams think- are the best team. So we, so you say the Rams, and then you know his average games where well, he didn't do nothing. The Bears, you know. Uh, I feel you. So, I mean, you know, I mean, that's where it kind of go. It's like, yeah, we beat the Bears, we beat Philly, we beat Detroit. But you. Jimmy really was the same guy. It was Jimmy yet. G is Jimmy G. I feel like the Rams game was his best game, though. I feel like he yeah, was, I feel I feel like the he, Rams were the Rams are better than the Falcons. And he and was just, he was just, I feel like so, it wasn't like it wasn't BS accuracy. Like it was like a legitimate 70 yeah, plus. Like, it was yeah, like he was hitting, routes, boof. the plays he had to hit, he hit. Like, I, 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 I routes, like, boof. Yeah, he 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 was. Inside the numbers, he did look good against the Rams. And, and, you know, part of that's the game plan, how the game played out, of course. Like, it, you know, it was set up for, like JB said, we were running the ball. But but regardless, I guess, you know, look, I know Jimmy's had success against the Rams. I think that may have been part of the reason because of the quick release. Trey Lance, it doesn't seem like he's able to – we saw the, the, the pass to Ayuk. The, we saw him throw it over the middle. We You know, he has confidence in it. He's able to – he has the cannon. He's able to – he was accurate, you know, like – I'm, there's a lot of things to be confident. Hey, the one that Ayuk was raw though, because I, so like, I feel like I feel like I finally saw what Shanahan saw saw when he was scouting Trey Lance. When like you know they'd be like, oh, where he goes with the ball, like I you know I, I could watch the watch the college tape, but it's like I don't really know what he's looking at. But the way that one slant to Ayuk when he on the third down, you know the right. long one, when yeah. he ran for mm-hmm. hell long. And you got that yak, yep. Yeah, the one. And like you just see, you just see the eyes and the linebacker. You see right when the right when his eyes go like to the right, the linebacker go that way, and then and then he just fire it right where the linebacker moved to. And I was like that 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 was accurately. Lucky. That was not lucky. Accurately, like and it's you you see those sort of flash play like you know I I just the more I thought about it and the more I watched it and saw the all twenty two, I was like yeah he he had a nice game. Like he, like, and I know it's the Texans and all that, but he had a nice game. Like, give him props where props is due. So again, coming into this game against the Rams, the Texans are different from the Rams, and I just want the faithful out there to sober so up a little different. bit. They're very different. Humble yourself. It doesn't mean you got to be scared coming into this game and be all fear. No, like I'm excited. I I'm. You got to hey, appreciate it. Scared? What's wrong with being scared? I think you shouldn't be because I feel like it's just the unknown, and you got to embrace that. 
It's not about like this team is going to beat us. I'm still confident we're going to win. It's just the legitimacy of don't come in with arrogance that we're going to do that. Be so confident, listen. believe in your team, but, you know, be humble and uh, appreciate this week because this might be the last time that we're talking about how the team, who's starting, all these various things about next week's game. This the, the, such a roller coaster season. All the ups and downs, everything we've been through, the off season, and we're finally here. And regardless, even if we win, even if we lose and, and still get into the playoffs, the regular season is going to be over. And that playoffs is going to be a whole different beast. So just be ready for that. Humble yourselves. Sober up, but let's, you know, also get drunk because it's going to be a good time. And uh, we'll be at the game, like I said, me and JB at least. And I know all day and the rest of y'all faithful are going to be tapped in watching. Yeah, so yeah. make sure you tap in with us. All day, you want to say something? Yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to ask y'all this question. I'm going to pose it different than Croc. I think Croc, I think Croc was asked. And uh, I know he was asked. I listened to I watched. I think it was after the after the Titans game. He was asked or he he brought it up. He didn't really say an answer. I don't think he did. But I'm going to ask y'all. So. Okay, I'm actually I'm gonna phrase it like this. One would be uh you know, no way in hell. And 10 is, oh, absolutely. Will we be eight and seven? Or what are we, nine and nine and nine and seven? Mm-hmm. We'd be nine and seven if Trey started from the beginning of the season. Or what's what's y'all gauge on that? Is it Man, no I'm, way in I'm, hell? I'm like, I'm like a five. Cause I don't it's like I don't know. I mean that rookie. I know what he got right now. And right, yes, I mean it it wasn't great. It wasn't perfect the Texans game, but it was it was it was like all right, this and we won. It was like all right, this is good, but it was against the Texans. So I don't know, but the beginning of the season, he's I don't know, bro. He could have won like, those games, and we lost so many games at the beginning of the season. Five. I'm at a I'm at an eight. I'm at an eight, and I think that I'm at a, I'm at seven point five. Let me say that I'm at a seven point five, and I will say I also give this caveat to your question, even if. We did, you know, if we were eight and ten or you know, or eight and uh, nine or whatever the case is, eight and eight at this point, whatever the case is, I still would prefer that. <laughs> I, I would prefer right. I, like it does. It does to me like it, it's a moot point because it's like he's the future. I want to see him, you know, get the opportunities he's going to be with the team. We were just talking earlier all day about like how we gave Jimmy G the contract, and my whole thing was like, you know, you were saying we could have franchised him. I'm saying we saw the Kirk Cousins situation with the Washington football team, and the quarterback is that different position, man. It's owner, general stability, manager, coach, trust. quarterback. You want stability and trust and all those sort of things in that quarterback that this is our guy, he's going to be here, et cetera. You, so I was fine with giving Jimmy G that contract because the market was what the market was, and I want to do that as opposed to doing the franchise tag. Similarly, you know, if you don't think it's an issue of development, if you think it was literally just, oh, Jimmy G gives us the best chance to win, I don't care. I'd still rather play Trey because I think – the ceiling is higher. So maybe the floor is, you can argue lower, but the ceiling is higher. And it's not just the ceiling for this year. It's the ceiling for next year. Absolutely. I don't want to be in the situation next year where you're playing him and saying, oh, well, this is his first year. Well, his first year could have been last year. That's you know my, what I'm saying? That, like, bro, I swear so, that's my exact point is that he, if he had 12 plus games under his belt, I wouldn't give a damn <laughs> about this week and making the play. I mean, I don't say I won't give a damn. I want to make yeah, the playoffs, yeah, yeah. but I wouldn't have any hurt feelings behind it. Mm-hmm. because we would know that next year we don't have a rookie quarterback anymore. Mm-hmm. But now we do. We have a rookie quarterback next year. Mm-hmm. And we possibly could be coming off a non-playoff season. So it's kind of like, uh, you know. Hey, man, but... so we got to win the Super Bowl this year. If we win the Super Bowl, y'all be happy. <laughs> y'all oh, be hell happy. yeah. yeah. If, Jimmy Gar- if Jimmy Garoppolo won Super Bowl MVP, I would be happy. That's, <laughs> I don't hate Jimmy. That I don't want to even win with him. Like, some Jimmy lovers – want to lose because of Trey. I ain't I don't I don't dislike Jimmy that bad to where I want him to lose. I want Jimmy to win. Yeah, no, I, should, a, yeah, the, the I shouldn't Jimmy see him thing, you get intense. I shouldn't see yeah I hate that Jimmy gives the best chance. That that left that's gone. That's uh, evaporated. Now because of the injury and stuff, but I think aside from the injury, there's arguments on both sides. That's all I'll say. Just objectively there's arguments on both sides. I don't agree. The, you know, yeah, the I, argument with Jimmy is that he just gonna know how to run the offense better and get to the quick like easy throws quicker and might I feel like that's that's the argument that you could see that but then you know he is going he's still a liability but not a limit it feels five. like with the with the you know with the like Chris Sims was talking about the middle of the field yeah you feel me that middle of the field is is a liability everybody Safety know everybody knows he's going there everybody know he's going there I, I Honestly, I'm surprised at how successful him and Kyle still is in the middle of the field because you know they're not going anywhere else. Well, but like you said, for that Rams game, 
and Cincinnati game, and even the Titans, people was open in the middle of the field, and it's just it's just fascinating that they still allow Cal or Cal. Well, he's one in three in the division this year, Jimmy. You know, so I think the teams that know him best, you know, that could be a part True. of it. You know, yeah. so but uh, I, you know, we've been on for about an hour and a half. Um, want to close out the show. Um, again, uh, the whole sentiment I had was about sobering up and. You know, as a as a fan base, but at the same time, as have excitement, even have fear, have all these emotions, but just be aware. I just don't want the season to come to a, a striking halt for anybody. Um, I just I don't want to avoid that. Appreciate the season and what it's been, and just being in this position to have this opportunity. There was it was looking bleak at some moments, so definitely you know be appreciative. And uh, this might be a good week to maybe I'll make a promo video. Maybe I'll make a, a season recap video or something like that. Week, kinda, this week, this a playoff game. This is this is everything, man. This is everything. It's such a big game. It's a home game in LA. Uh, Got to be excited about that. Um, real quick before we sign off, I'm just looking at the background all day. The photos that you got up there. Oh man, yeah, like, you got a situation right now. I mean, you gonna have to break down what we got. You got Prime. You got ninety ninety four ninety five Prime. The real Dion. Hey. You got you got Derek Jeter under him. I got you got Jr. Jerry Rice in the Super Bowl, and mm-hmm. then you got you got the goat Reggie Bush. Hey, you you a USC fan from Memphis? How'd that happen? So what happened was, so I love the Tennessee Vols, but they hurt my feelings when they didn't give me any kind of offers, any kind of just how you doing mm-hmm. football letters. It hurt my feelings. I ain't gonna lie. It hurt my feelings. Old Miss and Mississippi State and Memphis and mm-hmm. they sending me just little letters come to our camp. But for whatever reason, the Vols wouldn't. Mm-hmm. I still I don't have them anymore. But I kept just let regular little you know letters in my uh, shoebox, and mm-hmm. I kept waiting every day for the Vols. I just want that letterhead with the and they no, never look, did. A question it. There, they huh? never did it. You know what I mean? I'm born in '86, so. This is 98, 99, you know, coming high school, 2002, 2003, my junior, senior year. I graduated in 04. And, yeah, so long story short, the Vols would not do it. So about 2001-ish, I, you know, Carson Palmer, Troy Palomalu. That's what I'm seeing on you know, Fox, ABC. And I was like, you know what? I'm 15, 16. I can change teams. And I left the Tennessee Vols. So I've been a Trojan probably about 22 years now. Uh, you know, but everybody else been, you know, years, 49ers, Lakers, Yankees, they've been since, you know, I was six, seven years old, but yeah, the, 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 the Trojans were last quote unquote, but they, that was on ABC all the time. Yeah. Uh, you know, playing them late games. So that's yeah. how I saw them. That's okay. how I so, yeah, yeah so, so there's a method behind the madness. Okay, I, I, I like that. Um, you know, and they had Reggie Bush, you know, one of the oh, players, yeah, so yeah, right? yeah, they had the polarizing players exactly. to gravitate you, you know, because you if you're not from these places, something has to gravitate you there. It's it's funny. I um, you know, as we close out, I'm actually, you know, like I said, JB played at Cal, and like when he played over there, it's like I was a Cal fan. Um, my little cousin he played at Stanford, he was actually the MVP, the defensive MVP of the Rose Bowl in 2000 and what was that? 15? Yeah, um, it, it, it wasn't Solomon Thomas. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> no, it was not. Shout out to Uswa, Nigeria brother. Um, but um, but yeah, uh, you know, I so it's like I, I don't have I don't know anybody who's playing college football anymore. So it's like I don't have like a, a team, you know, that I root yes. for. The, the school I went to didn't have a college football team, Santa Clara right. University. So now that I live in LA, I just moved out here. And now that Lincoln Riley's the coach at USC and stuff, I'm like, F it. I'm going I'm to adopt USC. Like, USC is going to be my it's, squad. It's, it's like, time to do it. <laughs> it's going to be my squad. It's a lot of faithful who are tapped into USC. So I'm like, it just makes sense. Like, I, and I, you know, being in LA, it's like if I did want to pick a team like USC versus UCLA, UCLA just, you know, it's, they, they, the, the bougie school, it's just, it don't fit my, don't my fit. energy, right? It, it don't, it, it, don't it, it don't hit the same. So USC just makes sense. And right now it's a lot of momentum. So, Hey man, I'm gonna have to tap in to uh, have a team to watch during the uh, college football season. But right now it's the NFL season coming to an end. The, the playoffs coming to a beginning. Are we going to be in? Are we not going to be in? That's the question. And the answer we'll have to find out. We'll have to stay tuned, but we're definitely going to get our popcorn ready. And like I said, we got to think about all the ups and downs, the roller coaster. Just have appreciation for this season coming to a close right now. I think I'm going to have to make some sort of video promo to get us hyped, get us juice, and get us thankful for whatever happens. You know, we got to go out there. But having said all that, don't get it twisted. Like, let's win this game. 
Absolutely. Come in that thing confident, like, let's make this happen. Let's win this game. I, I want y'all to understand what it means, but let's win this game. Let's make this happen. When we have a good chance to do that, I'm Ryan Matray. You know, I got five on it. You know what I mean? Like, I got five on it. That's that's what it is. We're going to be rocking in L.A., playing it, all that, going dumb, all that, seeing us in the parking lot. You know what I'm talking about? Make, make sure you tap in with us. Uh, JB's going to be there. I'm going to be there. Um, we got to figure out the whole situations and the activities and the festivities, but make sure y'all tap in with us. I don't even know where the seats are. They're, they're, they're good seats. They're good seats. I got some good seats, and I know wherever I'm going to be sitting, it's going to be some red next to me and some red to the side of me because this is a glorified home game. I love Can't it. wait for it uh, all day, man. Uh, JB left. I don't know what happened with that. I think his reception was going in and out, but all day. I appreciate you I appreciate coming you in, though. and Thank I will you. do you the respect of letting you know ahead of time next time we're coming on so that we can get the agenda straight. You can have a heads up on the topics, et cetera. But we're definitely like, I, I've been wanting to have you on the show for a minute. You're actually you, our man. first guest on uh frontline sports media. So I'm okay. super excited. To, I appreciate you, man. Reaching out. I appreciate you, man. This I appreciate fun, you, man. bro. I appreciate you. It was fun. And like that, um, we're going to sign out uh, all day once again, because I know uh, your, your name's not in the, uh, the, the uh, handle. Let people know where they can find you on Twitter, yeah. all that good stuff. All day at all day 10, all day one zero, y'all. I appreciate you. I saw Chris says I'm about the GOAT. Reggie Bush, the GOAT of USC football, man. No, Rice is the GOAT. Don't get it twisted. Rice is the guy that make sure Chris, because Chris, I've been, I've been following Chris the whole time, comment yeah. section. No, yeah. Reggie is just the GOAT as far as our generation goes and far as that. <sighs> dynamic I, I, I got to give it to Tebow. I ain't going to lie to you. <laughs> I got to give it to TiVo. That, that's, why, that's why you got to have me on the show again. We can go through <laughs> it. I have no problem with that. You know, I just, the quarterback yeah, position, Cam Newton, Tebow. That's for, yeah, that's for a whole different day. A whole different day. No, Tebow. Jerry Rice is the ultimate GOAT, no yeah. doubt. I promise you. That's why I got him on top. I got him and Prime on top because them the yeah. GOATs. And then I Mount Rushmore, the Mount Rushmore status for sure. Absolutely. And then, I got my folder. Then, them, them, them my teams up there, I got them. I got I got Cap and Mark, Mariana Rivera on the other side. But no, I appreciate you, B. Uh, when Appreciate I saw your you. text, man, I promise, if, I'm, if I'm able, you know I'm going to be there for you. So I'm happy, right. man. Thank you That's for love. thinking of me. Uh, this That's was love. great, great, great. I got some stuff off. You got you put some information yeah. in my head yeah. to make me feel better. Sober up. That's what I'm going to do. Hey, yeah. I'm going to root and for the 49ers, but I'm going to have a Falcons uh, Falcons earring on or something. Falcon, I'm gonna have some Falcons. We can do like, a, you know, what we do in Atlanta. We could have um some waffles. We got to eat some waffles in the morning. Waffles, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Waffle. We, go, we go waffle waffle it up. You know what I'm saying? Chicken and waffles, whatever it is. Waffle House vibes, you know, get some Coke, whatever you got to do. I mean, Coke to drink, not, you know, y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> Keep it real Atlanta, you know what I mean? And uh, listen to some Migos and then we going to get ready for this game, man. But that's Absolutely. what it's all about. We appreciate you, bro, for tapping in. We appreciate all y'all for tapping in, in the comment section, all Absolutely. that. Really At 49X365, make sure y'all tap in. Frontline Sports Media, you already know what it is. Croc, all the guys, appreciate y'all. We out. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor to be on the Tonight Show. This is the 4965 Podcast. And faithful, stand up, baby.